forestry tree we're going to talk about today. This is Suga heterophylla, or Western Hemlock. It's from the northwest coast of America, from Alaska down to California, and it was brought to Britain in 1851. It likes deep, moist soils, so it's mainly found in the west of Britain, um, although it can deal with drier areas, um, but the southeast is actually a little bit too far off limits. The identification of Western Hemlock is all in its name. The botanical name Suga heterophylla, heterophylla meaning different sized leaf, hetero and phylla. And that's because when you look at them, there's about three different sizes to them. Big, medium and small. Underneath, we've got these two white stomatal bands and they also sit on these tiny little pegs. The needles are rounded at the end as well. The bark is brown, it's lightly fissured, and it's thin as well. When you take the bark back and get underneath to the cambium layer, this is edible, and the Alaskan Indians use this as food, especially during winter times. The cones are tiny. They're only about the size of your thumbnail, Although traditionally Western Hemlock has been of lower preference to plant over other species, it will probably have a major part to play in UK forestry management in the future, especially with us moving towards continuous cover forestry. And that's because it's a very shade tolerant tree. In fact, it's our most shade tolerant forestry species we have. It can happily grow underneath itself. It can happily grow in very densely shaded um, areas of the forest and it can sit there for years waiting for a gap to appear for it to then shoot up. Now it does have its drawbacks in continuous cover forestry management. The fact that it can just spread everywhere and grow under those dark shaded areas means that if it's not a desirable species in that particular area then you're going to need to clear it out. As we look around here there's no other vegetation other than the western hemlock that has regenerated underneath itself because it casts this very dense, dark shade, nothing else has the chance to grow there. So it's great for forestry workers because you can move through the stand quite easily, not get caught up in all the bramble. However, it's not great for wildlife and for wild plants. Western hemlock typically reaches its final felling age at about 60 to 70 years old. On really good sites, it can be as low as 55, on poorer sites that can be up to 80 years old. So it does take a bit longer than Sitka spruce to grow. The timber is said to be an intermediate between Sitka spruce and Douglas fir. So it's fairly good quality timber. It can be used in construction work where that requires low strength, so no high strength stuff, but um, can be used in that and high quality furniture as well. The North American Indians used the bark to tan leather and other tanning purposes. There is a couple of problems with the tree though. They do suffer with this fluting around the butt of the tree, the base, and this is actually your highest quality timber because this is your fattest part, this is where most of it is. And it does taper off quite markedly as it gets taller up to the top. So unlike Douglas fir, which I said in the previous video that it's gum barrel in shape, it barely tapers off. Well, this one really does taper off. And this is what I mean when I say about it being very shade tolerant. So if you're growing underneath this very old beech tree here, which is always casts a very dense shade, but it can deal with it and it's growing up. And like I said earlier as well, that's also one of the nuisances that foresters have with it, is that it can get everything. 